Welcome back to Beyond the Trail podcast, where Austin and I like to share our creative endeavors uh, beyond the trail. Austin, who showed up, you guys, I'll just go ahead and tell it, at like, we had one minute to go. I was getting like really it, nervous. It was like four minutes, four <laughs> minutes. We're having some technical difficulties in the Side Trail Adventure studio, uh, but we, uh, Pulled it out at the last minute. And now everything <laughs> is fixed. We are ready to go. I wanted to kick off the show, Austin, to see if you could guess with some, with a couple clues, a new piece of hiking gear that I recently purchased. I couldn't help myself. Okay, first of all, I'm going to say, first and foremost, I did not need this piece of gear. My first guess was going to be shoes, because I know who you are with shoes, but nope. you always need shoes. I've added another sticker oh, there to my is. collection. Nice. Okay. So if you're a Durston gearhead, there's a big joke on their group Facebook page, which everybody should go over and check out, that when you get new product, you just, you're just buying a new sticker. So I've bought a new sticker this week. Any guesses, Austin? Come I'm on. Gonna say, I'm going to say the Z poles. Yeah. Well, okay. The hiking poles. Yeah. Ready? Check Look those bad boys sage out. Sage green. That's legit. Yeah. Are those carbon? The, I don't know what they are. I just know they were Durston. Daddy Durston told me to buy them, so I bought them. <laughs> but check this out. This is the coolest thing. On the bottom is a t is one of the Durston tents. I don't know if you can see that. Of course it is. Well played, Dan. Well played. I'm a little embarrassed. I didn't even know he was selling those. Austin. I, uh, You're the one listen, that got me on this mess. Well, right. But all of my money has, has gone into uh, anything with Sony written on the side of it. So, like... <laughs> So, yeah, oh I've, I've been a little lacking in camping gear lately. Why don't we get right to it? We have to mention our brand partner, and I'm going to turn that over to you, Austin. Our partner in all things with Jester Wallace Productions is Hiker Metals. Wim over at Hiker Metals, who Go is Wim. an awesome human being, an awesome company. He just put out, I want to say it maybe is about to come out, but I saw it on his Instagram, Metal for the Florida Trail, which looks amazing. Yeah, and um, the Ice Age Trail. And the Ice Age Trail, yes. I know how much time he put into the Smokies 900 Miler metal, so I, I know he has just got to be burning the, the midnight oil with uh, with all those designs. So he's got uh, he's got medals for all different kinds of trails out there, and I've got a few ideas in mind, too. If he runs out of ideas, I've got one ready in the hopper, ready to go. But anyways, go check out Hiker Metals, because it's... The way I look at it is it's one of those gifts that your hiker friends are always going to like. Because obviously I bought one for myself because sometimes you're looking for gifts for hikers. And you really don't know what you want to get them. Um, and the medals are always cool because you don't necessarily have to finish a, uh, uh, a trail in order to get one. Like I'm thinking about just go ahead and then pulling the trigger on a Smoky 900 miler medal, right. medal for myself. Just because. Because I think it's a cool medal and you can always kind of have it as your... Kind of Wait a, a reminder. Like, there it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it just looks so good. But it's just, it, it, you can get it there as a reminder, like, hey, this is in my bucket list. And all, and especially we'll go ahead and say the portion of the proceeds from the Smokies 900 miler medal actually go to the Western North Carolina Wilderness Safety Fund, which is the fund for the Haywood County Search and Rescue Team. So that's a big cause that we're getting behind this year, obviously, because of the film that we're doing almost said the title again. Don't say it. Um, but if you go on to hikermetals.com, use the discount code Jester. That'll get you 20% off. So that's always worth always worth it. But yeah, Hiker Metals, awesome company. And Wim is a super awesome person. I'm so happy that that we have partnered up with him. Just nothing but good things. So yeah, yeah. all good things. And you almost said the name of the film that we are working on. But tell everybody yeah. who's joining us next week. Um, oh, we have the star of the show for our film, Miss Nancy East, who is an amazing hiker, an amazing search and rescue team member, and just an amazing person. And I have loved that we've gotten to know her over this over the last few months. And we're going to have her on the podcast live next Thursday night. That'll be fun. 
8 p.m. All that information is down in the description. We should shout out the Allegheny Trail as well. We are going to be yeah. working with the Allegheny Trail coming this fall, and we are pumped and excited. There's a lot going on. But the purpose of this evening was to come on and share with you all if there's one thing that you can count on with Jester at Austin. I'm not even going to say the word change. It's progression. The yeah, one thing yeah. you can count on with <laughs> Jester in Austin is progressing. And I believe the title of this was The Benefits of Creating a YouTube Channel for Our Company, Jester Wallace Productions. In Austin, I want to start off with a quiz for you and the listeners. You ready? Oh, geez. Okay. So this is something I, I know. It's terrible. It's terrible when I like do research and investigate. For this episode, she's done Well, it's just a quiz. You know, I do this all day long, but now I get to do quiz adults instead of those under the age of 18. <laughs> so the, qu the question is, and this will lead into the benefits of us creating a company YouTube channel. The question is, on your phone, you probably have several apps. You have Instagram, you have Facebook, or on your computer, you have Instagram, you have Facebook, some of you have LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, or, or whatever. I don't guess it's a quiz. I guess it's a question. Austin, how often do you, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, but LinkedIn, go back? Now, I want a percentage. How mm. often do you go back and look at people's prior post, like even a month ago. Do you do you go on people's Instagrams and search over a year ago what they posted? When I'm bored. So for example, when I go on Instagram, if you don't have anything in your story, I don't look at your page. I don't really go back and look at people's pages. On Facebook, if you don't pop up the first couple minutes, because I really can't stay in Facebook, the couple minutes I scroll, I'm not going to look for you. I, I'm just not. Yeah. I would say for me, 95% of the time on those apps I mentioned, I don't go back. I agree with that. Actually, I'm going to pull something up. Hold on one second. This will help us with our where we're going. So I have a little stat here. You ready? You look really at, did look, your homework. I know I did, didn't I? <laughs> All right, you guys. I mean, this actually kind of blew me away. YouTube has 2.1 billion monthly active users based all around the world. That number shows no sign of slowing down with the projected amount of users increasing each, each year in terms of daily active users. Okay, you ready? YouTube sees approximately 122 million users per day. That's a lot. My question is, what would be the reason we would not be on YouTube at this point? <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is a universal platform. It is. Um, and the moral of the story is with my questioning, how many times have you gone back on YouTube and watched? I know if Hawk is still on here, I've gone back and I've watched 2019, 2020, 2000. When I need to get inspiration about the AT, I go back and watch his yo-yo hike. I can't tell you how many times I've gone back and watched your John Muir Trail hike. That's almost two years ago now. So YouTube is truly the platform the social media platform where your previous shows might actually do better than That's a, what you put out right, right now. Yeah. And I've, from a, you know, I've been posting videos on YouTube since 2019 and I still, some of my most popular videos are ones that I posted in 2019 that still do well. My Thurston XMID video that I posted in 2021, so almost two years ago, my best, most watched video on a regular basis. Every single month, more people watch that video than any other video, even the ones that I posted are brand new. So you're 100% right. I'm actually thinking about doing an experiment and being on nothing but YouTube. The only problem with mm -hmm. YouTube is that I see is, is you can't direct message people. One of my favorite things to do with like the really popular YouTubers is go back and watch their very first video that they ever uploaded, or at least the ones that they have that are still public and just watch that progression. Because like 
some of these guys like the Baird brothers and Joe Robinette, the Canadians that I have watched when I first started like really diving deep into YouTube, they're literally out there with some crappy GoPro and the audio is terrible and the video is terrible, but they're out there and they're posting it. Yeah, that's my favorite thing to do, to watch people be like, hey, he started somewhere, so I can start somewhere too. You've just addressed it right there. I've heard people, I've heard other creators say now is not a, you know, you're never going to be successful on YouTube. Now's not the time to get into YouTube. And I'm like, well, YouTube has 2.1 billion monthly active users. And I want to throw, I'm going to throw something else up for you all. This year in 2023, if you guys read this, YouTube is the most preferred podcast platform among regular listeners ahead of Spotify and Apple. Oh, snap. Austin, what do you got for that? Well, I've always preferred YouTube over the other stuff because I already have YouTube on my phone. And if, you know, YouTube is really trying to, in my opinion, they're trying to push out some of these others. Like Apple, for instance, you know, that has been habitually the gatekeepers of podcasting. If you want to upload a podcast, you have to give it to Apple and then they put it out wherever it's supposed to go. And I like, honestly, I like the idea of YouTube coming in, uh, Google and, you know, because they're the parent company of YouTube coming in and, and pushing that out and making it more universal and a lot easier, quite honestly, a lot easier to put content, podcasting content out there because it kind of needed uh, a guidebook before and yeah. now just put it on YouTube and it does yeah. all that stuff for you. You know, like one of the previous episodes, you were talking about the fact that if you upload something and YouTube will automatically recognize that it's a podcast and then all of a sudden you've got a podcast tab on your channel and it's accessible on YouTube music, and all that other stuff. So uh, the benefit of YouTube and Google versus Apple and all the other ones is there's just a lot of horsepower behind that algorithm that YouTube uses. And so it's a lot easier for people that aren't podcast people. Like and I'll admit, I was not a huge consumer of a podcast before I started talking to a mic. Um, it's a lot easier for me to find stuff now. Like when I'm looking for something to, to listen to or watch, I can search for it a lot easier. So it only makes sense yeah. that we kind of jump on that train. And I just did some random Google Googling if that's the word for it. And, um, you know, I was putting in like section hiker. I was putting in beyond the trail. I was just putting in different words, hiking, backpacking, video podcasters. And Google, if you're on YouTube, they will pull up your YouTube first, you know, because Google owns everything before you see the Apple or the Spotify, which is crazy. So it's it'll be interesting. I love it. What'll happen if YouTube gives us an RSS feed? Because you guys, the complication of loading a podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Overcast, you have to actually pay a service to do that for you. YouTube right now does it for free to YouTube Music. So it only makes sense. So that big, long introduction about YouTube it only makes sense for Austin and I to have what I'm calling our company YouTube account where we can show you our short films, we can show you our documentaries, we can, you know, we are producing the live versions of two podcasts now, this one Beyond the Trail and the Jester Section Hiker. So right now... We have a digital portfolio of our work. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's only going to keep growing. From a video perspective, too, it's a good place for all of our stuff to kind of live. Because I've got my Side Trail Adventures stuff, which is, it's kind of, I mean, I'm, the Side Trail Adventures is not going anywhere. But the Jester Wallace Productions YouTube channel is a place for our joint video productions to live. So whatever that might be, whether it's the short films, whether it's the trailers from other projects or anything like that. So it just makes sense. Austin, about 10 days ago, I, I think I sent you a text. Hey, you got a minute to chat. I've got something to run by you. And, I, and my response, my response was, oh, Lord, let me get some coffee. It was. So what did you what were you thinking? Who knows? Uh, I mean, anytime Jester floats an idea, it's usually a, a good idea. 
No, I mean, it seemed like a no-brainer, honestly, because before when we had our previous company, I mean, that was kind of the setup we had envisioned. So uh, we had kind of taken a tactical pause um, and thought about not having the the channel together. Uh, but after even doing it for a short time separately with the Jester Section Hiker podcast and the Beyond the Trail podcast and all that other stuff, it just made sense to put it all on one. Um, it, was, it felt much more natural. That's the other thing that YouTube is doing. So if you're a podcaster, they're not going to throw your podcast into a video algorithm. So they're throwing it into the podcast algorithm. So your thumbs up, your comments, your watch time, all that stuff goes um, to help us get out there. And again, the number one thing that I enjoy doing more than anything and the only thing in my mind that is going to help us be successful are you guys, the community, the trail community, the kayaking community, the outdoor community that is going to help us build our channel. We appreciate it. Yeah. Good times. Um, well, I'm, I have a story when we're done talking about YouTube. I think we've uh, worn YouTube out. So <laughs> the bottom line is, you guys, um, what you could expect from me and Austin is we're always progressing. And, you know, any good creator, company, entrepreneur, if you're not progressing, you're probably not doing well is the way I look at it. And, you know, we might change every 10 days because we're new and we're learning progress, and as progress progress what did progressing. i say you said we're changing oh, I we're said progressing. Change. oh no we're not changing yeah. we're progressing yeah so that's kind of where we are we're glad you're here and austin you do have something to share with everybody i was pretty fortunate so my good friend pete beck from river kings called me it was a couple of weeks ago and he's like you know we were talking because he and i talk a couple of times a week and uh, he's like did you see Ken Whiting's latest upload on YouTube. And I was like, I was actually about halfway through it and I got distracted and had to stop. Tell everybody who Ken Whiting is. So Ken Whiting is a world champion kayaker. He's done a whole lot of cool things in kayaks over the years. He is also, he's got a handful of TV shows and one of them is Paddle TV. And so his YouTube channel is called Paddle TV. He does some professional level video productions. He actually owns his own media company. And uh, my buddy Pete had done some collaborations with Ken last year. Ken and his cameraman drove down to North Carolina and they shot some overnight kayak camping trip. And then they went out to Wilson Creek and did a whitewater run on Wilson Creek. So he's like, Ken's coming down to uh, East Tennessee. Um, well, Ken said in his video, hey, I'm coming down to East Tennessee. And uh, he's like, well, April 14th. He's coming down. I was like, well, that's kind of specific. And he's like, you want to come? And I was like, and so I looked at my calendar and I mean, it was just like overflowing with stuff. I ended up moving heaven and earth with work and was able to go out and uh, go with Pete and uh, his son. And uh, we met Ken and Ken's cameraman, Matt. And so for an entire day out on, on the Teleco River in East Tennessee, I got to hang out with, uh, with the camera crew. And they shot an episode for Paddle TV on the Teleco River. And I totally geeked out on the camera aspect of it because what I've learned is being behind the camera is a skill just like any other. And sometimes you can have the most expensive gear, but if, you're, if your technique and your skill isn't there, it's still going to look like crap. And so it's been, it's been something I've been working on and I'm, it'll be a journey for <laughs> forever. So I don't think I'll ever necessarily arrive, but it was such an amazing opportunity to be a fly on the wall and watch Matt, Ken's cameraman, watch Matt work and the deliberate manner in which they came in and produced this episode was fascinating. And then on the gear side, like, you know, he's shooting with a, you know, super nice, expensive camera, cinema camera, you know, he's got the, the super nice drones and all that other stuff, but just watching the process because it, for me, whenever, especially like, for instance, when we went out to Haywood County and shot that training event, it was very chaotic for me. And it was a little reassuring actually to watch Matt out on the teleco because it was chaotic for him too. Like, because he had this, this big old bag of goodies. And so he had a couple of cameras and the drone and all of the other stuff. And he's scurrying down riverbanks trying to get shots. 
but it was just, it was such an amazing opportunity to get to hang out with them and then just get to meet Ken because it's very interesting to watch somebody on YouTube, watch them on the screens for years and years, and they get to shake their hand and hang out with them for a little bit. Even more amazing when you find out that they're just as cool, if not cooler in person as they are on, on the screen. And Ken and Matt are just 100% wholesome, good people. And you wouldn't even know, like, Ken's just so humble and just so easygoing. You'd never know that he's also just this world champion kayaker that's done all kinds of cool and crazy things and can do all kinds of cool and crazy things in a boat. Yeah. Awesome opportunity. I owe it all to my good buddy, Pete, for inviting me. Awesome. What an opportunity to learn. No college course is going to teach you that. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Matt's been to film school. He's done work with National Geographic. I mean, he's the he's legit. He's one of those guys that does it for a living, travels all over the world, pointing at cameras and stuff. So, I mean, like, that's his profession. He doesn't do anything else for, for money. So, like, it was really cool to watch somebody that that does it professionally and watch them work. It was incredible. Good stuff to come, you guys. And we just appreciate you guys being here. Austin, any parting words? No, really appreciate everybody's support as we progress and looking forward to the next episode. Awesome. So we'll end it here, you guys. Be safe out there. And Austin? Good times.